Hey everyone, Andrew Hess here. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna build an adaptive card. And we did one last week and that was using Microsoft Teams. Today I wanna use Outlook. I wanna build an adaptive card and use Outlook. In the future we'll do like Copilot Studio and we'll keep going through all this with the adaptive cards. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. Let's build an adaptive card that uses Power Automate. And when you join a Microsoft team, we're gonna send a nice adaptive card to you in Outlook, it's gonna have buttons and links and all this fun stuff. So let's get into it. You kind of see best practices here. I'll put this link in the video if you're, you're interested. It talks about card layouts. What's important is the hero is very popular. We have list, digest, video media form. Today, I'm gonna to create something in Outlook and we're gonna see how it looks. So different clarity, simplicity, you can kind of go through this documentation if you want. But what I want to do today is go into the designer. And once you're in the designer, there is a new button way up there, right? So you see way up there, check out the new adaptive card designer. That's what we're going to build today. And today we're going to do an adaptive card for Outlook. When you take a look in adaptive cards and you look in Microsoft Learn, right? So designing Outlook actionable messages you'll see that the submit action is actually not supported with Outlook. If you include action.submit in your card, it will not be displayed. So it's not even going to show in your adaptive card. Some people are using action.http, which is a REST call, and you have to be careful with that. That is like premium power automate, and then if you misuse it, then you're doing multiplexing, that's not what I'm going to recommend. What I'm going to recommend is actually, so here it is right here. See the action.http? That's what it says to use. If you had other databases or, you know, other ways to send, to use the action.http, I would recommend it. Now you can do this in Power Automate, but in order to do it, you really should have premium, Power Automate premium license for everyone who uses that button. So that's not what I'm going to recommend. What I'm going to recommend out of all the actions in here, is actually .open URL. I think this is one of the best actions in Outlook to be used. So you can send a card with URLs, maybe to introduce a Power App to someone, you use open URL, maybe to send them somewhere in your intranet, maybe to send them you know, somewhere, just use that open URL. And, and, and feel free to, to leave in the comments what you think is better. But I think when you're using Outlook and adaptive cards, the best action that you could use is .open URL. And the reason you might want to create an adaptive card in Outlook is because you could put it in Outlook, you can put it in Teams, right? You can push it different places and it all has that same look and feel. And I think that is useful in a business, right? You get that same look and feel. So today, let's create a, let's see, how are we gonna do this? Let's create a card that introduces someone new to a team. It gives them the SharePoint link. It gives them a power app and, and you get a friendly message. So let's create that adaptive card today. All right, we're in the new designer. The first thing I wanna do is I want a welcome message at the top. So a welcome message at the top is just gonna be like a label, is a text block. And I'm just gonna say, Welcome to the branding team. And maybe we want to change the way it looks, right? We kind of want to say the font type, monospace, uh, not great. Default, we could probably, you know, this is a heading. Uh, the size, we're fine there. The weight, I do want it to be bolder. Uh, the color, do we want to color light? Definitely not light. Attention, that's a red, a brown. Let's do, let's, should we do black, blue? Blue looks nice. We have welcome to the branding team. Then I want like a small banner image, some kind of image in here. So let's add a image. And in this image, we are going to upload an image and the URL, it's asking for a URL. So let's give it an ID first. So this is um, theme image ID and a URL. Now we need to find an image online. So this is somewhere that you have an image stored. 
And for me, I have an image stored in my GitHub. I generated this with AI and I read all the rules about it. I'm pretty sure right now in 2025, it is okay for me to use this image. So I'm gonna use an image that I've stored in GitHub. It's available publicly and I can pull it in to my ad adaptive card. You really don't wanna use an image stored in SharePoint or you know, maybe you could do it like an Azure blob storage, but with SharePoint, right, you have to go through credentials. It's not a publicly available image. So just think you want stock image, you want free commercial use, and it needs to be stored somewhere that's publicly available. But I have an image there. So welcome to the team. I really like the way this looks. Welcome to the branding team. I wanna center this now. Let's kind of center this right here. Horizontal alignment, center. Welcome to the branding team. Now let's put in a couple of buttons, a couple of buttons. Let's add a little complexity into this. I just wanna, I wanna make it a little bit more complex so we keep learning here. I'm gonna do a container. Actually, not a container. I want I want two rows. So what I want to do is a column set. I want two buttons and the number of columns is two. So one, two, I have two columns. Now I want two buttons. So I'm gonna put one action set here inside this column and one action set here inside this column. And they're both gonna open URL. So add action, open URL, add action, open URL. I want them centered. I do want them centered. Let's see if we can get them centered. Space, horizontal alignment, center. Horizontal alignment, center. And then let's just take a look at how it looks. So here in the very narrow, it doesn't look good. Maybe in guess that's your phone. I'm not sure exactly what very narrow is, but if you really shrink it down, it's not going to look good. You need to pay attention to these things. Does that matter for you? Maybe we want to make the buttons a little smaller. The narrow, I'm assuming this is like your cell phone. Standard width, this is probably Teams. These are assumptions that I have. Maybe I need to look this up and let everyone know. But I like this wide, and so we're going to have two buttons. And the first button is going to, and we need to assign IDs. I always recommend assigning IDs. I'm gonna say button SharePoint site ID. And this one, I'm gonna say button power app uh, ID. All right, and so the first one is gonna be our SharePoint. And the second one is gonna be, uh, we'll just call this branding app, all right? So we have our two buttons here. I wanna change the colors of them. So positive, what happens if I do destructive? A red and a blue, those are our colors right now. Two blues, I, I don't mind the blues. Notice how this one, okay, I think we're looking pretty good. That looks good, enabled. URL, oh, icon URL. So if you don't wanna find pictures, there are icons out here. Let's see here. So this is SharePoint. So we want a web page, web asset. I like that. And our branding app, this one is gonna be an app. Can we get an app or a phone task app? That's not a bad one. App generic. So you got different options in here. Let's go with app generic. All right, so we have our SharePoint site and we have our branding app. That's all looking good. Now we need to get the links to these. And remember, if you don't have access, they will have to sign in afterwards, unless you have like single sign on and you're already signed in through the browser that you have open. All right, so let's make sure everything's looking good. Tool tip, if you wanna add in a tool tip, opens the branding SharePoint site. And this one is opens the branding Task app. All right. I'm going to grab the URL of our branding site. And th there's a warning here. There's a warning. And I think we should try and obey it. So the speak property should always be set as a to provide a way for screen readers to describe the card to the end user. This is something that I believe we have to manually do right now, but it's very easy. So right down here, we have our, our JSON. So after, let's see, after, after version, 
I'm just going to add speak in there. And then I'm going to write what I want it to speak. This card invites, invites you to the SharePoint, the branding SharePoint site and app. And let's spell it out, app. So just kind of adding that out in there and then you see I have a red squiggly, just add a comma. And now we have added that speak property for accessibility, that error goes away. Property URL must be set. So let's kind of see where that is. So URL is not set on oh our branding app. So let's go grab a Power App. So we're gonna go to Power Apps and we have apps here. And I'm just gonna to go to this one that we've been working on. And then I'll do details. And then I'm gonna grab this web link right here. I'm gonna grab this web, web link. I'm gonna come back to my designer. I'm gonna drop in the URL. And so now we have no more warnings. So we have a nice, beautiful card. You can add more to this. I think in the future, we'll keep working on cards and we'll do some fun things like compound buttons and containers and fact sets. There's reasons I just, I don't think there's much content out there about using adaptive cards and I think they're beautiful. I love them. So let's keep going. All right. So we have our entire adaptive card created now and we have a speak property also for accessibility. And maybe what you want to do is on the picture, right? So on the picture here, do we have a way like a, a pop alternate text? So alternate text, let's say it's a welcome image so that's all it is it's a welcome image just add that in there for accessibility i think our adaptive card is looking great so now let's go to power automate and do this when someone joins the team but i think for today just to make this simple because i don't really have someone to add to the team let's just do it on a manual click so for today our flow is going to be on a manual click so let's just do manual first I'm gonna skip all this and we're gonna do a manual trigger but what I want to do I just want to check out the triggers for teams so for teams right here when a new let's see when a new member is added that's how you would do this when a new member is added let's just go ahead and do it we're just gonna keep going when a new member is added to the branding team what do we want to do we want to send them an email now we can send them an Outlook message too, but today we're gonna to do an email. And they may get it another email, but I like to be more personal. This is more fun. So when a new person is added to the team, what we're gonna do is we're going to send them an email. Right there, send an email version two. And in this email, first we're gonna send it to who? We're gonna send it to me. Welcome, welcome to the branding team. And in here, we're gonna actually change to HTML right here. We're gonna to toggle with a code view. And we have our P class. Really all that I want in here is the adaptive card. That's all I really want. This may not work in every type of email box. I assume it will not work in Gmail. But the thing is, is we're doing this when someone joins a team. And so we know that this is going to an Outlook box. We know that this person most likely has licenses in our Office 365 tenant. You have to be careful with the license and all of that. But today we know that because we're sending it when someone joins a team. So the next part is we're gonna add in this script or just this HTML script. That's how we're gonna add it. And in this script right here, so we're gonna have the script in here. It's gonna be application adaptive card plus JSON. Now we're gonna paste in our code that we have here from our adaptive card, not here, but our new adaptive card. We're gonna take our code, we're gonna go back to Power Automate and we're gonna paste in our adaptive code. And then we are going to end our script and we are going to give it a try. So welcome to the team. Let's go ahead and get a save. Very simple flow. Most of the work was done on the adaptive card side. Let's give it a test. I'm not sure if we can use this trigger, how, the, how it's gonna work. Like, can we test it without adding someone to the team? And we probably can't, so I'm gonna go back. So since we can't test it with someone adding the team because I'm in a dev site and this is all by myself, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a manual trigger. And so I'm just going to say manual, uh, manually trigger the flow on a button press, saving, give it a test, manually, we're going to run this flow, run, hopefully that uh, error goes away, looks like it went away. Now we're going to check Outlook. And hopefully our beautiful adaptive card is going to be here. Welcome to the branding site. And we see nothing. And we saw nothing. So let's give it another try. Maybe it kind of stripped away our work there. Let's try adding it to a compose statement. So compose. Let's paste all that in there. It's, it stripped away my script for some reason. Let's try and put that back in there through a compose statement. So I'm going to say script type. Let's give it another try. So it's in our compose. Now in our code, we're going to pull in our compose statement, our outputs. Let's give it another try. Let's see if that fixes the issue. I'm going to leave the error in there. I like to leave errors in my videos. I don't like to show that I'm perfect. I'm definitely not perfect. This is how I learn things is by making errors and then trying again. But the thing is, is when I learn from them, we can all learn faster. This time my image did work. This time we have our buttons. It looks like the text is not centered. I kind of, so the icons, that's what's missing. It looks like the icons didn't come through, doesn't it? That's another lessons learned today. I did kind of research on that. Out, uh, Outlook does not support the icons. So we're gonna have to take that out. So we have our nice card. It has an image, it has two buttons. Now I'm sure you could do this other ways, but with the new adaptive card designer, why not do it? It's, it's fairly super simple. It's fairly, it's very, very simple. I'm gonna leave it at that. So I'm gonna copy it and we'll go over this one more time. We have our flow. What we learned today is icons are not supported in Outlook. Submit, action submit is not supported in Outlook. And if you don't put this in a compose statement, it strips away some of your script. It's, it strips away a little bit of the script. So you have to put it in a compose statement. And so we have our adaptive card here. We're gonna try one more time. And I think I'm going to do this at my place of work as I have a, a team and I'm going to create an adaptive card for when you join the team. And we're going to manually run the flow. And what you would do is you would change the trigger. Compose. You heard that noise. We got an email. Welcome to our branding site. It has our SharePoint, our branding app. So you open it up. It goes to our branding site. Beautiful. We have our app. So this is our app that we worked on the other day. This is kind of more what I want to do. And I think we're going to keep working on adaptive cards for the next few videos. So if you have any questions or any ideas that you want to do for the adaptive cards, you just put it in the comments. We'll keep going with the adaptive cards. I want to keep learning here. And I, I feel like a lot of you do too. So thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess. And I'll see you next week.